Hi, this is Dale, and I'm standing here next to an aspiring actor, Gabriel Reed. How are you, Gabriel? I'm doing good, thank you. You doing good? Yes, I'm doing real good. Um, Gabriel, I wanted to ask you a question right off the top. What inspired you to become an actor? Honestly, I was put in a lot of situations where it's, it's required for me to act, and I wasn't happy for a long time, and uh, the only way that I could do I couldn't force myself to be happy was by acting and in turn it, it became real and it became something that I needed to do to be happy. The things that I was going through in high school, they kind of pushed me to be an actor. I mean, I wasn't happy. I was just really just a hormonal teenager that was angry at the world. But to be happy, it required me to act. And then, you know, people always have something to say about acting that it isn't real and that it's an illusion. But at the same time, it became real for me and it became real when I was trying to make myself happy because, I mean, I'm happy, it must have worked. <laughs> so acting basically, when you said you were a hormonal teenager, acting is, was basically like a second release, so to speak. Yeah, it was, it was a way, it was, it was a release of my energy. How do you get yourself prepared to play from one role to another with such short time in preparation, a uh, short period to prepare your roles? Um, I read. That's a, very, that's a very big part of it. I need to read my script, I need to have it memorized, and then I need to read my character. In the movie Shattered, um, I played a role as a boy coming up to a soldier that was coming back from Iraq, and it was just trying to make him feel comfortable. I was trying to welcome him home and trying to let him know that everything here, it's, it's nothing's changed, you know? It's the same people. Excuse me, sir. I just wanted to come up, shake your hand, and say thank you for the service you did for our country. Thank you, man, I appreciate it, thank you. No problem, my cousin Frank, he was in Iraq for three years. His Humvee got blown up, but he, he almost didn't make it out alive. What's your cousin's name? Frank Cortez. How's he doing now? He's cool now, he's just chilling in the States. I don't know what I would do if he didn't make it out. I mean, I just, I'd be devastated. A lot of family's important. Family's everything, you know what I mean? It's just a big family out there, you know what I mean? We're all family, right? All right, man, thank you, brother, I appreciate it, yeah. There actually were a lot of parallels between um, my family's life and then the, the the plot, what was actually happening. Prison Twist, can you tell us a little bit about that movie? That, that was a great role. I had a lot of fun with that one. Terry T was my character and he was supposed to be an inmate in prison. And um, he was supposed to be snitching on the inmates that were making a bomb for his freedom and helping out the feds. But at the same time, he didn't, he just wanted his freedom. He wanted to get out and not have to snitch on anyone. So, I mean, there's the dilemma of survival, self-survival, or am I going to worry about the other inmates? I only told you and the feds what I did so I didn't get blown up into a million little pieces in my cell block by some idealistic freaks. Okay, so you got the bomb before it went boom. Everybody's happy. Prison Twist was actually a really fun role. Um, Terry T was my character and he was supposed to be an inmate in prison and um, he was supposed to be snitching on the inmates that were making a bomb for his freedom and helping out the feds but at the same time he didn't he just wanted his freedom he wanted to get out and not have to snitch on anyone so I mean there's the dilemma of survival self-survival or am I gonna worry about the other inmates you see me crawling around here in the dark on all fours with a tail pin on my ass and claws? If you're trying to pin down a rat, you might want to check the cell block next door. Okay, because I ain't got nothing to say. So you were really caught between a hard, uh, rock and a hard place because in a state prison system, stitching, um, that's considered a death sentence, isn't it? Yes, definitely. And what can you do? I mean, you you're sitting there talking to them and you're about to get out and then they're still asking though too, you know, who's gonna blow us up? What do you say? What would you say? Well, I don't know what I would say and I'm glad I'm not in that situation, Gabriel, but I'd like to ask you one question. How did you feel 
putting yourself in that role when you know that someone in the next cell possibly is making a bomb, I jump up on the megaphone and I tell everybody. The prison has their own etiquette as far as how they handle their own situations in the prison grounds. And snitching is not one of the ways they do it. And I think that um, you studying for this movie probably realize that that's a pretty bad way to go. And could you tell us something about that? Yes, definitely. But also, snitches get stitches and end up in ditches. So, I don't know. You heard it from Gabriel. Gabriel Reed. This is Sacramento Entertainment coming from Dio. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. You have a good day, sir. You too. All right, bye.